NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is having to clarify his position on a consumer price on carbon. Because yesterday, Singh said this in a speech at the Broadbent Institute conference here in Ottawa. Fighting the climate crisis can only be done if we are united. It can't be done by letting working people, by letting working families bear the cost of climate change while big polluters make bigger and bigger profits. So after that speech, reporters asked Singh if he was saying he wants to get rid of the consumer carbon tax. Listen to this. What we want to do is we want to lay out our vision, uh, a new Democrat vision for how we tackle the climate crisis. For the consumer price specifically, though, do you want to get rid of it? Do you want to pause it? Do you want to stop the hikes? Like, what are you proposing here? For our full plan, we're going to release that plan and we're going to present that to Canadians. So we don't have our full plan laid out, but we have some elements, the principles of our plan. And the principles I want to lay out today were that I find it problematic that the Liberals have set up a divisive system where they're dividing the country. Okay, so this morning the Prime Minister was asked about that and he says he sympathizes with Singh due to all of the political pressures around the issue but says that he no longer understands the NDP's position on climate change. I don't entirely understand the position of the NDP in pulling back both from affordability measures and uh, from uh, the fight against climate change. But I can assure everyone that this government, my government, will continue to step up on the fight against climate change, will continue to put more money in families' pockets. So hours later, Jagmeet Singh released this statement. New Democrats have not changed our position on the consumer carbon price. What we have done is commit to building a climate plan to make big polluters pay, bring down costs for Canadians, meet our emission targets, and unify people in taking on the climate crisis. Tonda, where does this leave us? Because it sounded in that scrum yesterday mm -hmm. that they were getting ready to move away from the carbon price. Mm -hmm. He says in the statement they haven't changed their plan, yes. but it sounds well, like they're getting ready to develop yeah, a plan yeah. that maybe moves away from the Here's carbon the price. Here's the problem. It wasn't just that scrum. It was earlier this week, um, midweek, uh, the NDP supported a conservative motion for the first minister's conference on a carbon tax right. debate, which all of the premiers, most of the premiers uh, at least, um, want to get rid of, uh, if not get rid of, exempt them, their own provinces right. from, including an NDP premier. And so they support the conservatives on that. They can't explain it later. Then they say the, they blame the liberals for thinking a consumer carbon price is the quote unquote be all and end all. So that suggests that they're not too enamored of it anymore. And look, the NDP is squeezed politically. Whether we understand yeah. what exactly they're saying right now, uh, what we do understand is the politics. Right? Mm. They're being squeezed by conservatives in blue collar ridings where the mm -hmm. NDP vote is at risk. They're getting squeezed um, by voters who actually support climate action and think that the liberal consumer carbon price is a part of that. But they also have NDP government or parties rather in Alberta and Saskatchewan who oppose it. And again, Wab Canoe in Manitoba is the premier who wants out of the carbon mm -hmm. tax plan. So look, politically he's getting squeezed and so he's trying to come up with a policy solution that threads the needle and up until late this afternoon, could not say, in his own words, I support a consumer carbon well, he's price. Not, well, he's not I, I still don't think they're there, they're right? Not you know, quite there. Yeah, yeah. So, so Marie, it sounds like they are, like, I, they're, the, the New Democrats I've been speaking with about it are saying if people have to choose between affordability and climate, affordability is going to win and climate is going to lose, and we need to find a new way forward uh, to ease those concerns. Mm -hmm. But that sounds like no consumer oh, carbon I was price. Straight up told right? everything's on the table. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I think they are slowly um, setting the stage for what we deciphered from his speech and he didn't um, communicate yeah. that at clearly. At minimum, that was a trial balloon, at, at, or most likely so. it was a I step away from I supporting think carbon he's price. he's really preparing yeah. things for his big new climate plan to, to shift. Um, it's not, the points that he raises aren't a wrong debate or an erroneous debate. Um, even environmentalists will say, are there more effective ways? Are there different ways of, of um, fighting pollution? The Climate Institute, which is not exactly a right-wing group, came mm -hmm. out with a report recently saying that industrial pricing um, will bring down between now and 2030 emissions by 20 to 48%. But right. consumer pricing is like 8 to 14 percent, so less effective. Right, but people but, aren't smelters, right? Like, but, so indus industry is where most of the emissions come from, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I'm just saying there is a debate to be had, even amongst environmentalists. Yeah. People say there, there might be different policies. Sure. But it's a complete 180 for the NDP to say not, 
we propose this and this and this on top of the existing carbon pricing, but instead. Um, it's not unusual for the NDP to be talking about affordability. Jack Layton in 2010 asked for the GST to be cut um, yep, from still, home Still their heating. policy, still their but, policy. Um, yeah, but he was also asking for retrofit measures, and you can ask for public transport measures or car incentive. You could ask for other things. Um, and I agree with Tana. What we clearly see is Mr. Singh sort of struggling to see where to position himself, but the, the communicating is off. The timing is very odd when a quarter of their caucus had just said they're not running again. It just gives the impression of this, this, mm. this party that's struggling and, and sort of trying to figure out where they fit in. And it opens a huge pathway for liberals, in my mind, because they're the sort of natural alternative in people's minds. It's harder for the NDP to convince people to vote for them. Now it's even harder amongst progressives. Right, well, Nigan, you know, you're in Manitoba, right, where Wab Canoe is sort of a proposing a similar sort of thing. Most of the NDP caucus is in British Columbia, where they've had a consumer carbon price without a, as robust a rebate system as the feds have uh, for longer than, than, than the federal government has had it. What do you make of this? Just saying, yeah, we're reconsidering whether the carbon price fits into our plan provides more clarity than all of the statements and comments we've actually gotten. Well, the Manitoba uh, pulling out of the consumer carbon or the request to pull out has to do more with the net zero fact that Manitoba yep. is heading towards a net zero and that they feel that it's redundant and that it, it doesn't have the kind of impactual nature um, uh, for Manitobans. And, of course, the issue is if that's true or not. But, I mean, the fact that uh, Singh is coming out and talking about the Canadian Climate Institute's report, uh, I've been on record on this show to say that consumer pricing doesn't have the same kind of impact as industrial pricing, but that both is probably needed mm -hmm. on some level. And the reality is that I think that this kind of vagueness or uh, this ability that Singh has to sort of try to play both cards, but really downplay what is a very unpopular consumer carbon price, um, and then gives the liberals a real space to distance themselves and to sort of mm -hmm. position themselves as uh, the ones who bring in the consumer pricing index and the reality is that that's really what the Liberals have wanted for a while. They've wanted to be seen as uh, kind of a champion on this issue. I don't know if Canadians will be able to see that. I think certainly that the NDP, uh, unless they come out with a plan that involves both, uh, if they decide to go all industrial and to play the big polluter model, which is what Singh's been doing for the past 24 hours of saying big polluter, big polluter, big polluter, I'm not sure that Canadians will be uh, or have a kind of understanding of what that means other yeah. than the constant kind of call that they do for making big, big, I mean, insert, instead of saying big polluter, say big corporate entity, say big tax evader. I mean, that's a frequent NDP that people just get tuned out. And so I'm not sure that this is a very logical move by Singh to be able to try to gain support and really right. try to shore up what is a major loss in ridings on the issue of affordability to the Conservatives on this one issue alone. So, so Jason, I was reading uh, about the potential for the differentiation between the Liberals and the NDP in this boutique newspaper called the Toronto Star. Uh, I think Tonda might have had a byline on that or files from. Uh, but it, it seems, um, you know, where this argument is going, that the federal Liberals and the Greens, of course, would be the last party standing, a federal party, standing by consumer carbon pricing. And should the election go the way it looks like it's going to go now, and the provinces would be left to their own devices in many, many, many ways, we're going to go back to this sort of patchwork quilt of approaches to dealing with this, this issue of different levels of ambition in different jurisdictions. And it is difficult to see a path where the targets are hit uh, under such a scenario. Well, I don't, I don't, I, I can't imagine anybody is going to want to run uh, in defense of this carbon tax that isn't uh, completely chained to it. Yeah. Uh, you can argue that the NDP are, um, but you know this wasn't their election promise. This was something they wound up going along with in minority government settings. Um, they could point to the fact that uh, the first party that uh, ran vociferously against a consumer carbon tax was the New Democrats in BC. They fought tooth and nail against the uh, Gordon Campbell Liberals uh, carbon tax more than a decade ago and lost. And uh, of course, the current uh, BC NDP, uh, you know, is now you know, the, is one of the last major governmental uh, parties defending this uh, mm -hmm. current approach right now. 
Uh, it's not surprising that uh, Jagmeet Singh wants to uh, defend, you know, di clear distance from a deeply unpopular policy. But I think there's also the reality in his own, among his own voter set, that they want to make sure that they have a credible policy. There are, you know, even though, you know, to uh, Marie's point, excellent point about the uh, Canadian Co Climate Institute report, that's still some percentage and still some megatons to make up, uh, yeah, be it exactly. by stronger, be it by stronger industrial policies or something else. And um, if you know, if anybody in the NDP or elsewhere don't think that those costs ultimately get passed on to the consumer. I have a few uh, economic textbooks to uh, send you. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, going back to that Climate Institute report, I mean, the, the 8 to 10 percent that this represents, Tonda, is it, like, it's the emissions of Manitoba on an annual basis for three of the be, Atlantic provinces. Yeah. So that's what surprises me. On the one hand, that Jagmeet yeah. Singh cited that report in saying that, look, industrial emitters are the bigger polluter here in the where we need to put our focus. Well, duh. But what do you Don't do with the, the other one. What do you yeah. do with the other thing? It's not an either or. It's not mm -hmm. a binary mm -hmm. choice. Yeah. At least it hasn't been for that party uh, up until... I guess a couple of weeks ago when they voted in favor of the increase to the carb, federal carbon tax, right? Yeah. So, so, so I guess to me it was this, the, the incoherence of the last 48 hours, 72 hours of the NDP's stance on this speaks to a bigger political problem for them and that's what fascinates me and mm -hmm. you know for now today that they are saying even only on background to people like us saying oh, we, we actually do support the consumer carbon price. Um, it, it, it's, it makes me wonder, what are you setting the stage for? Yeah. Where are you going with it? And so, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, what so is the plan? It's one thing to float a trial balloon and say we're going to focus on, double down on industrial emitters. I think that's, that's that the doesn't kind of sound thing. like, yeah, sorry, that doesn't sound like what it is is the problem. No, it right? doesn't. Yeah. So just uh, we run out of time, but Marie, you know, if the goal here is to draw a contrast, right, to separate yeah. themselves from the liberal policy, but also be distinct from the conservative policy, in politics in 2024, there's tax the tax, and mm -hmm. you get a rebate, you get back more than you pay. I don't know if there's room in the argument in between that for some fuzzy uh, third way, unless it's yeah. explicitly clear, and that's not what we've seen. Well, and especially from the NDP was my point, um, mm -hmm. because they all we've seen in the polls, the liberals going down, the conservatives going up, um, the NDP is not gaining anything from this dynamic. They're like staying or even going down a little bit. So they're not Losing, yeah. doing excessively well. Um, and they have a bigger hill to climb to convince people to vote for them, especially if there is a, in, an indication that the conservatives are going to win the election and people, some people would like to block that. Um, their usual reflex is to vote liberal. So mm -hmm. they have this, this bigger convincing to do, and now they're sort of taking away one of their own arguments to, to distinguish themselves from the conservatives. Um, it just seems like they're really shooting themselves in the foot. And what I found really interesting was that all this happened from Jagmeet Singh, when then you had Boris Johnson come talk to the Canada Strong and Free Conference uh, network, anyway, I can't say it, that thing, and, and say, <laughs> Mr. Johnson saying to conservatives, you need an environmental plan. Yeah. You cannot not exactly. have one. It was almost like they were each at the wrong conference. Anyway, to me, it was quite interesting to see the contrast. Yeah, uh, Nigam, a quick uh, final 60 seconds from you, but it is interesting because this comes from Jagmeet Singh, not in an off-the-cuff thing in a scrum, but from a yeah. scripted text the broad to yeah. the Broadbent mm -hmm. Institute, right? I mean, immediately, almost immediately after making a huge tribute to Ed Broadbent, he came out and then made this announcement, which, uh, while vague, still gestured to the idea that there's some sort of plan coming, mm -hmm. and then constantly said, there's a plan coming, there's a plan coming, there's a plan coming. Well, that plan had better be specific, and it had better, if it is going to thread the needle, as Tana pointed out, it needs to be specifically about industrial emitters and uh, have some kind of radical way that can differentiate itself, because if they're putting all chips in the middle on this one, uh, this is a really big risk. I think what would be really good before the election, just as a final point for me, is if everybody put their climate plans out there and the PBO could compare them all and we'd get an apples to apples PBO analysis of everybody's measures so we could have a proper uh, election campaign on. It would be fun. You fat. <laughs> I, I know, I'm a nerd. That. I, I know, I'm hopelessly, hopelessly naive. Hopelessly naive. All right, I want to thank the power panel, Jason Markasoff, Nigan Sinclair, Tonda McCharles, and Marie Vestal. Thanks so much, gang. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Good.